I got into UNSW. Hi, good news. Hi, if you're watching this because you received an offer, well done, congrats, and hopefully I'll see you around campus maybe. If you're watching this because you're subscribed or curious, hopefully this video gives a realistic insight as to what med at UNSW is like. Finally, if you're watching this because you know me in real life or do med with me, Hello, so let's get started. <laughs> okay, so course structure, there's three phases, one, two, three. Phase one is year one and year two. These are your pre-clinical years. You go to hospital once a fortnight and have one campus clinical skill session also once a fortnight. In year three, you go to hospital three days a week and you're at uni two days a week, I think. In year four, that's your research year. You either do ILP or honors. In year five, I think that's biomed exam. And then year six, I have no idea. It's either ASCII or ICE, but don't quote me because I'm only in like third year. Okay, so just a brief overview of year one, your total assessment and exams in year one include four individual assessments, four group projects, four and of course exams, two or three soakers using the OSVIA platform where one will be a practice soaker, one practical exam at the end of the year which is one out of three accumulated prac exams. You'll do the other two in year two. In year two you do three individual assignments unless you get a P- minus or you fail one of the capabilities in which case you should do another one. You do four group projects, you do two or three soakers using the OSVIA platform I think and you have two practical exams and then you'll also have your end of phase exam. That's your your end of phase multiple choice exam, your OSCEs as well as your portfolio exam, that's where you're going to reflect on the eight graduate capabilities. Okay, apologies if that does sound overwhelming, but I just wanted to keep it real and so that you have like a good idea of what's going to happen. Also know that if you do fail, it is okay because I think we have supplementaries for like everything. However, I think they're in the holidays, so you get to like party less if you have to do them. And also almost everyone has survived thus far so hopefully you should be okay. If you're not you can always reach out to your mentor, year lecturers and we have a well-being officer or you can contact your phase one convener or your course convener. In terms of technology you enroll and register for classes via my UNSW. You will access your timetable via eMed and most of your content is found from Moodle so I'll give you a quick rundown. There's forums where you can ask the lecturers questions or you can email them. Forums to ask about clinical skills questions, individual assignments and group projects. On Moodle, there's also content from lectures, SGs, tutorials and pracs which are divided into scenarios. In phase one we run on an eight week course system. In year one you have four terms of eight weeks and then usually two weeks break in between which is kind of intensive and then after term four you get three months of holiday break. How exciting! <laughs> also in phase one our content is structured under scenarios. We'll have lectures and SGs dedicated purely for example to two weeks of like you know menopause or arthritis. For Moodle there's activities, links to SG, tutorials and lectures. It has everything. Take your time to explore Moodle. I think they have a video on it, but I'm not too sure. In Foundations, there's a biology bridging course, and I think you also have to do the academic integrity module. And also there's a compulsory library Elise quiz that everyone has to do, so do that ASAP. Useful documents for you is the umbilical. This is written by MedSoc every year. You should get a guide in the first week or so, and you should bring it to your mentoring sessions. You have your phase one clinical skills guide, which is online and breaks down clinical requirements by course. You have your phase one guide for 2022, which has an overview of your phase one assessments and expectations. You also have an SG guide each term which has all the SG questions and the content. Each term you also get a PRAC manual, same thing, learning objective questions and content which is organized chronologically by PRAC. And also the phase one newsletter is super useful. It has all the info like exam date and you can also see how you did on the end of course exam and the practical exam I think compared to the cohort. So they normally give the mean and the median. So location, your live on campus lectures are often in Rex Vales Theatre which is near the quad. Your SGs will be in in Wallace work and it'll probably be in one of the G rooms so like G10, G11, G12 etc. Your practicals will be in Wallace work or BABS that's the biological I don't know what it stands for biological something it's where excess cafe is. Your anatomy and cadaver prax are often in BABS. Your tutorials are often in the SG rooms in Wallace work so again G10, G11, G12. So making your way around campus unfortunately my sense of direction is quite limited. I legit only know how to get to Wallace work, BABS, Matthews food court and boost. So go on yellow shirts tours during a week or ask your mentors or just follow your friends around and try and memorize everything. The next thing was a big thing that confused me. What's the difference between lectures versus SGs, toots and prac? Lectures are not compulsory. There's lecture recordings 
which so you can watch after on 2x speed which I like to do. You usually have two a day from Monday to Thursday but sometimes you can have up to 11 lectures in a week if it's a course with more content for example H&B that's health maintenance B. Most examined end of course content are from your lectures so make sure you go through them or at least the learning objectives. SG stands for scenario group. These are compulsory two times a week. You'll be divided into a class with 12 to 14 people from your college. So when you get into med we get assigned into one of four colleges A, B, C, D. The names are like I can't remember but like Stanley, Cooper, Hollows and something. You also get an SG facilitator. Your SGs will either be Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday at either 1 to 3 p.m. or 3 to 5 p.m. Here you will visit some content from lectures, have some presentations and you'll often look at clinical cases together for example radiology, investigating the pathology or physiology of diseases. You usually have one SG where you present your group project roughly 15 minutes where you may have to answer questions from your classmate and from your facilitator afterwards. It should be really chill but again it depends on your facilitator and also depending on your facility you may be able to bring and eat food. Share food with the class, how sweet. Some end of course content can be derived from your SG so make sure you pay attention. If you're wondering what are end of course exams I'll put a timestamp here and then you can skip. Next are tutorials. They're usually compulsory but they're not too common compared to lectures and SGs. You'll have a few ethics tutorials every term where you discuss ethical theories in relation to medical cases so utilitarianism, deontology. Um, I think you also discuss stuff like the four box method, the ethics cube, concepts like non-maleficence, beneficence, what like each party should do, what's the right thing to do here. Ethics tutorials also usually have pre-readings that are on Moodle and you will also likely have tutorials on pathology, anatomy, physiology so especially like the harder concepts. Tutorials are more so to consolidate your knowledge and understanding on the harder topic. In terms of classes, in one tutorial they'll usually have two to four SG, so that's like roughly 28 kids to 48 kids. I can't do that. Something like that. You might see people from a different college, so it's a great way to meet people. Practicals are usually compulsory, 12 to 16 a term, two to three practicals a week. It covers the four disciplines which will be tested in your three practical exams over phase one. So anatomy, histopathology and embryology, microbiology and biochem, finally phys and fun. Here you'll see a lot more people. Um, usually I remember seeing like my whole college or half of my college and half of another college. Moving on to IA. So in terms of grades you can either get F, P minus, P or P plus. Each term you will have one individual assignment which is due Monday 9 a.m week five you have to submit it through Turnitin on Moodle and also on Emit. The Turnitin is just to check for plagiarism. For each individual assignment you do there will be two focus grad caps and three generic grad caps. The three generic grad caps always stay the same so you don't need to worry about them. Whilst for the focus grad caps you have to choose them carefully each time to make sure you cover them at least once and overall there's eight graduate capabilities or grad caps. You need to do each of them at least once and at least get a P. It's recommended to repeat the grad cap if you get a P- minus or an F and these grades are important because they count towards your phase one portfolio which you will write towards the end of your second year due in either December or January I'm not too sure I know it's easy to say now but try not to panic too much it's a lot more difficult to get an F than a P in my experience like I've never gotten below a P but I don't know also in foundies you'll get to do a individual assignment and a group project and they both don't count so it's a good time to practice and get used to everything and it's also okay if you don't do well like I'm pretty sure I copped like two P minuses in my foundies IA but then later I got like straight P's and then I got P pluses so just take the feedback see what you can learn and just reflect and yeah it should be chill and just make sure you cover the assignment criteria which they will have in your SG guides related to IA in phase one you have to do a minimum of one negotiated assignment. The earliest you can do this is during first year in third term which was when I did mine. Up to you when you want to do it but there's like a quota each term. I think it's like roughly 100 kids can do a negotiated assignment so the later you leave it the more risks you run. Also you need to put in a proposal when you do the negotiated assignment and it's not guaranteed that your proposal will go through so that's something to think about when you're working through the timeline of when to do your negotiated assignment. For your negotiated assignment you get to choose two grad caps however one has to be the self-directed learning one so technically you only choose one and you have to do minimum one negotiated assignment in phase one you can do more than one if you like it's up to you and when you do do your negotiated it's not doing week five it's doing week six monday 9 a.m so now group projects so similarly for grades you either get f p minus p or p plus you have to do a sg presentation each term in i am not sure sorry week five or week six and then you have to submit your group report into emed in week seven i think and you also need to run it through turn it in via moodle so for each group project you 
you do, again, there'll be two focus grad caps and three generic grad caps. And again, the three generic grad caps always say the same. Like I said, there's eight grad caps. Don't quote me on this and make sure to double check because they might have changed things in your year. However, in my year, we didn't have to do all eight grad caps for our group projects, but we had to do it for our individual assignment. However, you have to do at least one peer teaching group project. These are like the most effort. So make sure to pick a really good group so that you don't have to carry them. I was really lucky that my group was super good. So I did mine in first year, second term. Shout out to Nicole, Nat, Rebello and Yash. So I ended up doing the peer teaching group project with them and we did really well. So yeah, overall, make sure you get a super good group. Suss out everyone. If you think someone's a bit bludged, just don't do it with them because you may regret it. And also make sure for all your group projects to give yourself feedback and email under the feedback tab because this will count toward the teamwork capability of your phase one portfolio. So make sure you give yourself feedback too. So there's a self feedback section, which I'll put here. Now, if you're the type of person who bludges group projects, please pull your weight and do your part on time because one, your soul will feel lighter and two, you won't get roasted in peer feedback, which can negatively impact your portfolio mark. Okay, now moving on to Okay, so that's the end of this video. I tried talking fast, but if you have any thoughts or questions, chuck them in the comments. I'm sure this video was useful, so you are welcome. Um, like, comment, subscribe, turn your notifs on. I'll see you in my next video. Take care, stay safe, and bye. It's not